So today we got a totally new chair. We're gonna do assembly, we're gonna do review, and I'm gonna show you everything that comes inside of the box coming up. So what's going on as you do with that guy held today? We have Ergonomics 2, a totally different chair. If you're not familiar with the first video I did, which was Ergonomics 1, you can go back. I'll put the link right here or right here. And that was the Habata chair. And I'm still getting reviews till this day on that chair, as well as manufacturers directing clients or customers to my YouTube channel to see how that chair is and also how to put it together, which is something that we're gonna to do today with the new chair. So I have my office desk over here, my media center is over there. I get tired of taking one chair back and forth between the two, so I have a totally new chair for the media center, and then the Albata chair will go over there at the desk. So let's get into this video, because what you wanna know is how this chair looks, how hard is it to put together, and is it even worth you buying? And we're gonna answer all three of those questions today. And just to hit the fitness tip, I'm gonna go ahead and start my watch and see how many calories I actually burn while putting this chair together. So let's get started. Tools and the chair. The Respawn RSP S110. So quite about the same size as the previous box as the first chair. A bit heavier though. So let's cut this thing up. Now I believe I've gathered every tool that I think I'm gonna need to put this together, assuming that Respawn has not already included tools. So it's probably a good idea that you have your own tools. Some chairs include the tools. Some chairs only need something as simple as a Allen wrench. So right here we have packing, don't need that. Throw that over there. All right, now we're getting into the main contents of the box, packed like so. And if you want to see the other side of the box, this is how it looks on the other side. It gives you an idea of what the chair is supposed to look like. Now, will it look exactly like this? Who knows? It might be something like Taco Bell's menu. Those nachos look good, but then when you order them, they actually look like shit. So let's get this first part out of here. Now, what I like to do is take all the pieces out, lay them out so I can see them. And then once I get the directions or the instructions, I can kind of see all the parts laid out so it's probably a good idea for you to follow that same type of protocol so let's scoot the box over here and start taking parts out and laying them out already the first piece the instructions are back here sorry for the plastic noise and I'm thinking that this is the bottom piece I'm thinking so let's not assume let's get these directions out Go ahead and slide this piece over here out the way. Take the plastic, make sure we don't have anything else in there. Toss that over to the side, take our instructions. Oh, and put them right here. I got something nifty to tell you that definitely did not come with the other chair. And we'll go over that soon. Me being a gearhead, I like what I see in that package. So let's get this other part out of here. This right here, be sure not to throw this away as I see it is a pillow of some sort. Look like some regular packing, so we'll put that right back here is that it doesn't look like it needs any type of assembly it's probably a, an accessory piece we could probably end up doing that last the next piece to come out of here is pretty big and it is definitely the back piece you can tell already let's get this unwrapped very well packed and protected especially on the metal ends so some of you may wonder like why are you getting a gaming chair well gaming chairs are in my opinion, designed a lot better than your typical office chair. Now, I'm not sure it's just my opinion, but gamers spent a pretty long, prolonged time sitting in front of a television. I'm not a gamer, but they spent a lot of time sitting in one spot, playing games 12 hours on, and these companies design these chairs for these people to be comfortable during that entire time, as well as competition, so why not? get something that may be more than what I need so that I can be comfortable when I'm doing content or when I'm doing client protocols or when I'm doing my own content as far as editing and I'm sitting there for hours sometime because sometimes it takes that long. So the Habata was great and I'm hoping this chair is the same. Uh, we got a flap down here that's attached and we'll sit that piece right here. Another blue bag and this looks like an arm piece. Let's get this unwrapped. And it is an arm piece. We'll put that right there. This is another arm piece. It's in a different color bag. I don't know if that makes a difference. So what I'm gonna do right now is 
replace this blue bag back over there with that arm piece. Uh, here's another bag right here. Seems more like a maybe another pillow type. And it, uh, it does look like it, but we'll put this one back here with that. It's not gonna require any assembly. It's probably just gonna be attached somewhere. Now we're getting to some boxes within boxes. Let's open these up and see what's in here. Be careful not to go too deep when doing that on the box because you never know what might be laying right up under the surface and you could damage something before you even get it in. This is definitely the assembly where you will the adjusting assembly. Be careful with this as uh, some of these parts are moving and snappy. Be sure not to hit these handles prematurely. I'm gonna set that right here. Also have a bolt kit. You see right here, you got a bolt kit. Labeled alphabetical uh, letters and they did include two Allen wrenches and the hardware. So I will probably match these Allen wrenches with the bits for my drill. That way I can speed this process up. Here is another one. I'm imagining this will probably be the piston. And it is. And you do have a collider, um, a telescopic type assembly. So it's a good idea to keep these together. I'm gonna put that right back here. Put this piston, keep it in the bag because some of the pistons have oil on them and you don't wanna get it anywhere. So put that right there. We have another box inside of a box right here. I don't know what this may be. Oh, this is, oh, this is gonna be the feet. There's nothing else in this box. Toss it to the side. We have our feet and our wheels. This is pretty nifty. It looks like some type of alien technology. It's like a damn octopus. So I'm gonna keep this slightly collapsed, put this back here along with the wheels. Now let's get to these directions. One thing I do love is respawn included stickers. Gotta love stickers. All right, instructions. Now roughly with instructions, we're looking at something. There you go, there are your instructions. Two pages, mostly pictures. So we're gonna try to do it off pictures. We have a legend saying what all the parts are labeled as far as A, B through P, and also corresponding letters on this side so that we can put that together. You can see that, all right? So let's get to this. Base first, it says to take these arms and fold them out. Come a little closer. Fold these arms out. Looks like somebody already kind of stepped on them. The next thing it says to do is insert the casters. So let's just take these out of here, one at a time. All right, there are no extra parts in this bag. So I will be kicking this off to the side, make sure there are no extra parts in there. We're good. All right, so the next part we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this base. Caster stay in place. You can put a little weight on them right here. And we're gonna install the piston, the gas piston, and then we will install the telescopic path plastic covers. So the piston is gonna go this side up. All right, so anytime you see that little like button, that's what's gonna go up toward the assembly to be adjusted because that's what causes this piston to extend, all right? And your weight uh, retracts it. So put this large base in here, should settle. Take your telescopic piece, slide it over like so. You don't have to push down on it, just snug it over. Roll this base over here. We're gonna start working with the seat section. All right, so, so it's gonna be these to attach the base. And you have four of them. Take this piece and it says your handles will also go off this way. And as I can see, the back portion is ready to be bolted there. I'm gonna align those holes. This is where I'm gonna go ahead and speed up some time. Ah, didn't pay attention. We should have used J as well washers all right so i'm gonna have to take these back off and put on four washers all right so there you learn from my mistakes we need four washers so i'm gonna take those back off
C section is done. Now it says to, we're gonna turn this over, bring this base back over here, turn this over and put it on top of the piston like so. And there we go. We're going to take our back piece, put our back piece, slide it down in there, and we will need more washers. Uh, it looks like a lock washer, I and L. So we're gonna use J, the lock washer's I, and the socket head Allen's this time, L. I'll show you how to assemble these. Take your socket head, put your lock washer on first, then put your flat washer on next. That's how you'll assemble all those. It's gonna look like this. And I'm thinking that this probably should tuck down there, the flap. All right. Remember, we're gonna hand put these on first so we don't over torque anything right off. And we know that all the threads are lined up, so just grab it up here so you can kind of lift it up a little bit, taking some of that pressure off, wiggle it, wiggle it, rough. So I'm just gonna try to put a little pressure on, see what happens, and there we go. And there it is, the hand allen to tighten it up. A little more torque and I can get a better feel, that way I don't strip the bolts out. All right. All right. So far we have burned 37 calories. All right, so that's in. Now on the back of here, there are some Velcro straps that you will take this flap, peel it over, secure it there. And there you go, the arms. So here it says that align arm set G, G. All right, so let's see what G, do we have any sticker indications on here that indicate what G? On the bag, nope. On here, nope. So what I'm gonna do is use common sense. Pretty much we know the armrest is gonna protrude so you can put your arm on it. It's not gonna be back here. So I'm gonna pretty much say this one is gonna go here. It's gonna go on this side. Hardware N and hardware K. And N looks more like a cap to cover the bolt so that you don't see it. And this is G and K, all right? No, this is, yep, yep, that's what it is. All right, so let's get this ready. I don't know where P is gonna come into place. I didn't see it yet. That's kind of funny. Oh, P, this one. Don't be concerned if you have extra hardware left over. P is going to be spare parts, all right? So those are just spare bolts in case you lose any. So the remaining are going to be K and N. Take your bolts, line them up right here first. And it sticks deep in there, so you'll need to use this first. Just kind of get it in there so then you can come back here and line this one up. If you tighten this one down too much, you won't be able to play with this one. So don't tighten it down, don't snug it down, just get it in there a few threads, then work with this one, all right? This side. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and tighten them up. That's good right there. Good right there. Same thing on this side. We're just gonna get them lined in a few threads. And once we get it in a few threads, move to the next one. All right, there we go, we got that. The rest in here is O, no N for the end caps. Go ahead and use the Allen to rip that open. Caps, they cover up the bolts on the side of the chair. Just push them into place. They're pretty easy to get in. That's all, nothing major. Don't try to over torque them, they're real rubbery anyway. It's just for aesthetics. This cushion right here 
is actually going to, it's actually a lumbar support. So this is your lumbar support. The gray side goes down. Two little clips right here. Take those off. take these straps, even them out, push through here for each strap, coming through the back of the chair like so, pull those down, now I'm going to take, I'll come a little closer, these straps, make sure they're even, I'm going to come up through this hole, pull that strap and I'm going to clip it in like so, same thing right here, pull that one, Come through the hole right here. Pull this strap up. Clip it in like so. And there is our lumbar support in place, which this other part is. It's gonna just basically, you really don't even have to unclip it because it just kind of goes over the top portion of the chair from what I'm seeing on the instructions. You're not gonna even go through these holes. So it just slides on top, like so. And voila. All right. Now, let's get some of this stuff cleaned up. You know I gotta sit in it. Now for the test. Oh, I don't wanna put my head on that, it sucks. Probably need a, definitely, um, with this chair going through transport, wipe it down. I'm gonna go and clean my neck off and I'm gonna wipe this chair down with sanitizer. But let's test it to make sure we're good. Let's test it going up. Boom, we get raised up. Let's see if this chair screws down. That's good, so we got up and down working. Now let's check the back adjustment. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that. Smooth right here, back adjustment is good. Uh, I'm noticing that Okay, so the back adjustment lever does not pop back up on its own. So once you engage it, you'll have to lock it in to where you want it or else the chair just keeps moving like so. There it is, it's stuck, all right? So you're gonna have to push it down pretty far right there as you saw. So once you get it to where you want it, push it down until it clicks and then it's locked in place. Now for goodie, this chair actually looks like it has a recliner section. So we pull this out. You pull it out, looks like you flip it up this way, and now you're kicking back just like this. Do you feel me? Let's let's turn this thing around so I can see what it's, what it's like. Oh yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking of what I need to do next. This chair is Mac Daddy fitted out compared to the other chair, the Habata. Now, the Habata did have an option to where you could put this recliner section on, Although, I have to say that this respawn chair feels a bit more sturdy with, with its options and it's clicking and not to mention the material. So I don't know how it's gonna be on breathability, but this is awesome. As you just saw, complete assembly was not that difficult. I went into it brand spanking new, not pre-prepping myself or anything. So it should take you about the same time or less, depending on how many of these chairs you've actually put together. Uh, I'm loving this lumbar support, which the Habata didn't have, and the head support, which is something I'm gonna have to get used to, but I definitely could feel where it would come into place, although the Habata kind of protruded up top at the headrest section, so there was no need for this additional. This recliner ability, I'm not sure how much I'll often use it. As for the feel of the chair, it feels pretty good. I like the material. I am a bit concerned about its breathability as I sit in the chair for prolonged times, but I do like the fact that it having a solid material, that it is probably more susceptible to be cleaned without soaking up the chemical or whatever I may use and putting it down into the cushion versus the Habata. I can see that happening. It's more of a knit cloth, breathable net type material so this is going to be a pretty good chair to test out you all make sure that you keep up with me throughout the time that i have this chair ask any questions that you may have so that i may add, answer them whether it's uh how is the chair holding up is the chair still together has it come started coming apart have you had to tighten up anything has anything broken these are questions that you're going to want to ask me through time so that you can know if you're going to buy a good product or not and as for calories i burned 107 calories putting this chair together 
together probably more than that because we started the watch a little late so there we got a little work in and this is my off day so even an off day happened to be an active rest day as for anything as that anything else let's check this chair out on some b-roll so you can see it spin see it up close getting personal with it you know what i always say about this time peace be safe and let's build together